This screencast lecture is related to the protein translocation and secretion systems that have been distributed there in the bacteria. It has been estimated more than one third of the protein that have been synthesized by a cell will be moving out of the cytoplasm. Where it will move? It will go to the other destinations such as plasma membrane or to the external milieu or to the external environment. Say, you look at the protein which I have discussed early. That is a cellulase an enzyme which can able to degrade the cellulose sugar. So, this enzyme is synthesized inside the cell and it need to be exported out of the cell. Like this, several enzymes may be playing the role there in the cell system. So, sometimes these proteins need to move there to the periplasm of the gram-negative organism. So, therefore, it is not surprising to find multiple systems of moving proteins have been evolved and present there in the bacteria and even in all the domains of the life. Whereas, some systems are unique for the bacterial cells and still in that a restriction has been associated only with some systems for gram-negative and some for gram-positive bacteria. Now, we come to the definition of the translocation. When proteins are moved from the cytoplasm to or across the plasma membrane, the movement is referred as a translocation. Whereas, protein secretion refers to movement of protein from cytoplasm to the external environment. All the different kinds of protein translocation and secretion system which we are going to see in this lecture involves energy in the form of ATP or proton motive force or proton gradient. While transport of the proteins there in the cell, variation in the cell envelope that is some cell structure pose different kinds of challenges for the protein secretion both in the gram positive and gram negative group of bacteria. For example, in gram positive bacteria, protein must be first translocated across the plasma membrane. Once when it crosses the plasma membrane, it can either pass through the relatively porous peptidoglycan into the external environment or it can able to attach there with their cell wall that is peptidoglycan itself. Whereas in gram negative bacteria, the transport of protein across plasma membrane need to be further accomplished by transport of that particular across the outer membrane of the gram negative bacteria also. First, we try to look at the point related to the translocation systems that are common in both gram positive as well as gram negative bacteria. Two translocation systems have been commonly present. One is a sex system. SEC refers to secretion of the protein and the other one is a TAT system. TAT refers to twin arginine translocation system that is twin arginine amino acid have been present there in this particular kind of a transport system. These two kind of translocation systems are commonly observed there in both gram negative and gram positive group of bacteria. The SEC system sometimes called as a general secretory pathway of the bacteria. It is highly conserved along the different bacteria and it has been identified in all the three domains of the life. It mainly involved there in the translocation of the unfolded protein across the plasma membrane or it integrates them into the membrane itself. The next one is a TAT system. As I already discussed, it refers to twin arginine translocase system. It is also widespread across both gram positive and gram negative group of organisms. They have been involved in translocation of a few dozens of proteins there in this organism. The TAT secreted protein as I already discussed must be completely of a folded one present in the cytoplasm. Now we look at few steps that commonly happens before the translocation event there in the bacteria. So before the proteins are getting translated, they must be sorted out that is Proteins have been formed there during the translation process. Translation you have studied there in molecular biology. So, due to translation, ribosomes help in translating the mRNA into protein. That particular proteins need to be sorted and targeted to the different destination there in the cell. In any kind of a protein, you may already aware from your biochemistry knowledge, it will be having a N terminal and a C terminal. That is, amino acids present in your protein will be having a N and C terminal. So, here the N terminal of the polypeptide is the one 
which first exit there from the ribosome and it found to contain a signal peptide or a signal sequence. This region of the protein can be easily recognized there by the signal recognition particle, certain protein RNA complexes that have been present there in the cell system. They will be constantly surviving on the actively translating ribosome and try to find the correct signal peptide sequence there in the system. Now, we try to understand how the protein translocation has been happening by the interaction of the signal peptide or signal sequence as well as the signal recognition particle. Earlier itself, I have told that the protein translocation there in the cell of two types. One is a co-translational translocation, other one is a post-translational translocation. The term Co-translational translocation itself says that this translocation is happening in association with the translation process carried out. That is, both are simultaneously happening. Here, if you look at the signal sequence or the signal peptide that have been present there in the N-terminal of the nascently formed polypeptide is easily recognized by the signal recognition particle when it is emerging just from the ribosome. So, now the signal recognition particle directs the ribosomes and the nascent protein to attach that to the sick protein that is sick YEG. So, in nutshell, as the translation is continuing there in the ribosome, the translocation is mediated by the sick YEG channel that usually involved in moving of the protein to the plasma membrane. Now, we look at the points related to the other one that is post-translational translocation. The term itself says that post-translational that is after translation is completed this translocation process will be starting. So, here the signal peptide that have been present there in the end terminal of the nascently formed polypeptide is correctly recognized by a sick A protein which is one component of this translocation system. It helps in inserting the signal peptide into the channel that have been created there by the SEC YEG protein. So, both this thing as well as the other protein that is SEC DF forms into the component of this post-translational translocator system. Here, the role of the SEC A protein is hydrolyzing the ATP that gives energy for the translocation of protein through the channel. The role of the SEC DF is providing the energy in the form of a proton gradient so that that will fuel the translocation of protein into the channel. Now, we look at the points related to the TAC system. It can be distinguished from the SEC system of transport by the nature of protein transporter. As we already know, SEC system are involved in translocation of unfolded protein, whereas TAC system translocates the folded proteins alone. Furthermore, the TAT system only moves protein that feature two or twin arginine residues there in their signal sequence. That is the reason why this TAT acronym has been formed. It refers to twin arginine translocase. Here, there will be a lot of different chaperons that have been helping in the proper folding of the proteins and even certain chaperons can able to insert certain cofactors and help in the folding. So, if you look at the formed protein has been subjected to a proper folding even with the insertion of certain cofactors and finally the TAT system is involved in the translocation of the protein. The TAT system usually consists of three different proteins that is ABC proteins. In general in the gram negative bacteria proteins translocated by the TAT system are further delivered to the type 2 or type 5 secretion systems for transport across the outer membrane. Now, we look at into the next part of the lecture that is related to the secretion systems that have been commonly dominatively present there in the gram negative group of bacteria. Proteins produced there in the gram negative bacteria need to be destined for secretion or surface display must pass through the plasma membrane that is into the periplasmic space and finally to the outer membrane. Some of the proteins synthesized there in the gram-negative bacteria 
need to cross into the two step process in order to get it secreted. Here the first step involves the translocation that is to the periplosum region that is mediated by a sec or tad system which we have already studied. In the second step there comes the some kind of secretion system that helps in crossing the protein there into the outer membrane. So, this kind of secretion systems are numbered from type 1 secretion, type 2 secretion based on the order of their discovery there in the system. Three type of this secretion system that is mainly type 2, type 5 and type 9 system comprised of second step that is in a two step process for their secretion. Whereas, the all the other remainder secretion system that is type 1, type 3, type 4, type 6 and type 7 constitutes only a single step process there in the secretion.